Island Connections has been providing uh, transportation to meet the needs of mostly our uh, elderly and older neighbors, but neighbors who are, for any reason, need a ride and are unable to provide their own transportation. We provide a much needed service to a much needed segment of our society. Most of our emphasis is on filling the rides that provide people with the opportunity to get to the most needed appointments in their life, like a doctor's appointment or uh, going to Brewer to the Family Cancer Treatment Center and receiving chemotherapy or radiation. People who are dependent upon uh, getting to uh, dialysis three times a week. We provide those kind of rides as the first priority. And then also we provide rides for people who have uh, personal needs to get to the grocery store, to the pharmacy, or to um, even uh, getting their uh, dog groomed at the uh, pet groomer. So. Um, there are different ways and different kinds of rides and different needs that we fill for uh, our neighbors. And we offer this at no cost. We uh, provide the transportation for uh, the delivery of Meals on Wheels. The Housing Authority subcontracts from Eastern Area Agency on Aging to provide the Meals on Wheels for uh, Mount Desert Island. And Island Connections are our wheels. So we would not get any meals out without um, volunteers coming three times a week to pick up three different routes going all over the island. We picked those meals up in Bar Harbor and uh, I personally uh, have been involved in driving meals to the uh, far side of the island, as we call it, the back side. Uh, we have the most people in Southwest Harbor getting meals, Somesville Southwest, all the way to Tremont Bass Harbor. Um, and then it also takes the driver a good two hours to do that route. We don't necessarily have um, taxis or bus services uh, available in all areas. And uh, this keeps them independent. Um, you know, they can uh, get on, get to their appointments, make the appointments themselves, and um, keep connected uh, to the community. Transportation nationwide is a huge, huge barrier for many people. As main as we can be taught to be very, very independent, which may lead to a stubbornness and not willing to ask. Too much pride, maybe. Well, thank goodness I'd gotten over that years, a few years before, so um, it was not hard for me to ask, but for some men it would be very difficult. What I learned at Island Connections is much more of the personal connections that are created, the services we actually provide. I, I know that I'm giving back to this community, to people who need things right now that they might not have needed before, and I might need it someday as well. I mean, I mean it's important for me to be able to offer my time and transportation to help others uh, when they need this help. And in that way, I've been giving, but it's also been something in which I have received is far more than I have uh, given. Well, I think I started out feeling like I wanted to help them, but really it kind of helps me. Uh, meeting the people that I've been uh, giving rides to has been a wonderful, wonderful experience. People love their drivers. It's really nice to make that personal connection. People who don't have transportation and are elderly and are struggling, um, they need some help. You know, someday this could be me, and where will I be in my older age if I need help or need a ride and I can't rely on family or friends? As a matter of fact, you were my first ride. You know that, right? Yes, that's right. And I was so nervous. <laughs> Holy mackerel. I was like hovering around like, are you fine? Okay, let me get your chair over. Get and you're like, just, just get behind the wheel and let's go. What's the matter with you? Hi, how can I help you? Yes, I'd like a large <clears throat> mocha frappe, no whipped cream, no drizzle, and uh, egg McMuffin meal. Some of the drivers get a real kick out of uh, me want to stop at McDonald's <laughs> for my mocha frappe and my egg muffin. Some of them, you know, never go to McDonald's until they meet me. <laughs> <laughs> they're all very pleasant, they're helpful, they're very accommodating, like stopping at McDonald's. It enriches you, enhances your life. It is a blessing. You feel secure because you know that you're going to get there 
for something that's going to keep your life going. I like to think of Island Connections as, um, as, so, as a social networking device, something other than Facebook or Twitter. It's uh, sitting in the front seat of that car. I've had some wonderful experiences. I have never in nine years of driving ever once turned on the radio or put in a CD or anything like that or have had no request to do so. I have to tell you, I have met so many wonderful people and they all have an, a, an oral history to tell me. One woman I remember taking to the dentist for the first time with tears in her eyes, 85 years old. This was a big moment, her first ride, where she wasn't in the driver's seat, but she was in the passenger seat. Being an independent person and being by oneself and not being able to drive, um, our own connection come through big time for me. The neighbor that I drive, she's a she's a wonderful woman who advises me on all aspects of my life during our drive together. We only spend about half an hour together every Friday, but she's really had a, a big influence on my life. We are totally different. I'm a little anxiety ridden and high strung, and she's very calm and peace loving. And so she helps me take a moment to appreciate everything around me. We stop and we, we watch the waterfalls on Sargent Drive, or we watch the trees and the leaves change. We acknowledge the boats in the harbor. Some things that I tend to take for granted living here. I learned that, that Frank came almost eyeball to eyeball with the killer whale. Uh, I had the privilege for uh, several weeks of driving a gentleman who had fought the fire of 1947. So I was able to actually see the fire through his eyes. And it doesn't get any better than that. And it is really fascinating to hear their life stories. You know, a lot of them have traveled the world with their families or their other jobs, you know, previous jobs. Um, I hear a lot about their kids and grandkids oftentimes. A couple of people who have, uh, that I've given rides to who come equipped with a small bag of cookies for the driver. And if there's one way to get another ride, <laughs> It's to offer cookies to the driver. It works extremely well. So sometimes when I ha pick up um, a neighbor, I may be, you know, jamming out to some Lady Gaga or some kind of crazy music, and I always ask them their preference. You know, what do they want to listen to? What do they want to hear while we're driving around? And that's been kind of fun. You never know. Some people want to keep listening to Lady Gaga, and other people have special requests, and I'm always happy to accommodate that. Uh, I've been invited in for coffee. Uh, because uh, I am the only person that person has seen for the last three or four days. They just wanted a little bit of conversation. And to have somebody realize that, yes, this person needs help, is what, to me, what humanity is about. You know, experiences like that uh, make this all worth doing. Without our own connection, this would have just been a struggle. What a, what a whole process this has been for me to learn that it's just not the hospital that cares for the person, it's a community. Everyone that's taken me has been so kind and caring. It's been wonderful. She's really taught me what giving is about. <laughs> kind hearted. Yes. The people we are driving, they had been our teachers. They had been our firefighters, our doctors and nurses, uh, people who built businesses here, who raised families here. They are important parts of the community. You know, they made the community what it is. And the very least we can do is be neighborly and help them out.